and uh, thank you very much to be to be here. And uh, now we will uh, welcome uh, Benoit Ritz. Uh, Benoit Ritz is a software engineer and entrepreneur, and uh, is the creator of the first desktop desktop based Linux distribution in 1998, Mandrake Linux. And uh, you recently launched. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. It's a slash e slash OS, uh, the e foundation OS maybe. Uh, so it's a fully degoogled mobile operating system. Sure. Uh, uh, thank you. Sorry, how are you? I forget to ask you the question. <laughs> right. So uh, just just to to make things clear, uh, I'm not Benoit, but I'm uh, Gaël. Oh, um, sorry. So, yes, Gaël Duval. Benoît was uh, the, no the Gaël just before. Yes, Gaël Duval. But uh, that was the, the good um, a biography. But I uh, I mismatched the name. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> sorry. Absolutely, no problem. Um, all right. So yes, I, I started. Uh, um, a project uh, three years ago, uh, which is a degoogled uh, mobile uh, ecosystem. So I'm going to do my best to present this uh, to the audience. Thank you very much, Gail, <laughs> and uh, and a nice presentation to you. Thank you. All right. So hi, everybody. Um, uh, nice to be here to to talk about the the, the project. Um, so just in a few words, uh, I will uh, introduce myself. Uh, I'm a software uh, engineer by uh, design. Uh, and uh, soon after uh, I completed my um, studies, uh, I started a, a, a project uh, which was a Linux distribution uh, called uh, Mandrake Linux. Uh, so I, I soon uh, became also uh, um, an, an entrepreneur uh, because we created a company to support this project at the time. And, uh, and yes, it's been uh, one of the first uh, Linux distribution to focus on the desktop and uh, to, to address a, a larger audience uh, than the, the tech uh, and the, the geek uh, audience uh, at, the, at this time. So this, this was uh, about 20 years ago, so it's a, it's a long time. Um, since then, um, I created uh, a few more, a few other projects. Uh, one was uh, Ulteo. It was... Uh, uh, desktop um, um, virtualization uh, system uh, that 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 was uh, supporting both uh, uh, Linux and um, and uh, Windows operating system. Everything open source uh, since I'm a long time open source uh, supporter. And um, more recently, uh, four years ago, I started to wonder about uh, what happens uh, in the smartphone and. Uh, and maybe uh, some of you uh, use a, a smartphone. Probably uh, most of you uh, use a, a smartphone. And um, maybe that, uh, or maybe not, uh, you know that uh, when you have your your nice uh, your nice smartphone uh, in your hands or uh, in your pocket, um, it it actually sends a lot of your personal data. Uh, to a lot of companies in the world. And uh, in particular, it sends a lot of uh, personal data to Google. Um, just to show you a few figures, uh, I don't have any slides, sorry. I, I'm just going to speak, so I hope you, you will uh, understand me. Uh, just to give you a few figures, um, if you are using an iPhone, which is about 20% of the smartphone market worldwide, uh, you, you send approximately uh, six megabytes Yes, six megabytes of your personal data every day. Um, if you are using an Android uh, smartphone, uh, so this is the rest of the market, so about uh, 80%, um, you, you send uh, 12 megabytes of your personal data every day to Google. Um, and few, few people actually know this, but this is the results of uh, several, uh, several uh, university stu studies. So. Um, the reason for this is that um, Google is pre-installed on iPhones and, and Google is every, uh, at every stage of an Android operating system. Um, and everything is done to collect your data because it's fueling, um, it's fueling uh, um, a business model uh, which is based on selling advert advertising. Uh, Google is the, the first uh, ads agency in the world and they have to know you, they have to know everything about what you do um, to, to sell uh, some advertising at a higher price. So, 
So we are all victim of this uh, giant ads uh, business model. And we think that uh, it has some consequences in terms of privacy. Because uh, when I say uh, your personal data, it's really a lot of your personal data. It can be your geolocation. It can be uh, what you do, your contacts. Uh, of course, uh, at some point, it's your uh, search history uh, on uh, Google search. If you are using Google. So at some point, they can really uh, learn a lot, really a lot of uh, about you and your personal habits. And we think that, and we are a growing number of people who think that it's not acceptable anymore because it, it's really a threat to, it's really a concern and a threat possibly to our freedom and to democracies. And we have to, we have to, to, we have to get more guarantees about um, the protection of our personal data. Um, so that's the reason why uh, three, four years ago, um, I, I started to, to think about, um, um, well, I wanted to, to, to find other products. Uh, I wanted to, to, to break free from Google and I wanted to stop using my iPhone at the time. And I looked, for, I looked for alternatives and actually I didn't find any credible alternative that everyone could use. So the, the next step for me has been to look at some possible uh, existing open source software that I could use to put together in, into a, a single uh, product um, that could be used by, uh, by anyone. So this is how everything started. And, um, and uh, we did a Kickstarter to, to, to test the idea and I have been very surprised uh, to realize that um, many, many people in the world uh, send me some messages of support to thank me uh, to, to, to start this project uh, because they were in the same situation. They wanted to find some alternative that would be more uh, protective with their personal data and they, they didn't find anything. So from the beginning, we have a, a nice and strong support from our community um to 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 achieve our mission if 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 that's possible but at least to to produce some uh some products that are um that give more guarantees in terms of uh, personal data protection so what are we doing exactly um we do well approximately two things two different things that are complementary one is the mobile operating system so we are forking Android uh, because Android is an open source operating system. And uh, we do a lot of work on it. Uh, I will give more, a little more detail uh, uh, after uh, to, to, to um, prevent uh, all those data leaks uh, to Google in particular and, and to other uh, services. And we also do uh, and operate um, a, a big cloud service that is based on Nextcloud, actually, um, and that offers, uh, you know, the basic online services that everyone uh, is using every day, like uh, an email, uh, a calendar, uh, contact uh, application, um, uh, file uh, storage, and uh, something to, to deal with your uh, personal documents um, online. And the two are connected uh, with some synchronization, synchronization mechanisms so that when you take a picture, we, you can retrieve it uh, back up uh, on the, the cloud and you, you can, uh, you, you can uh, manage your stuff uh, online. Um, so regarding the operating system, um, the first thing we do is that we clean a lot uh, the Android operating system. Uh, first of all, well, uh, we discovered this, but uh, few people know this. Uh, when you when you switch on your Android smartphone, uh, one of the first thing uh, that happens is a connectivity check. Uh, this means that um, uh, it, it's looking for you know internet access, and for this, uh, it is um, trying to reach to ping some servers on the internet. And of course, those servers are, you know, operated by Google. So each time a user is switching on his um, mobile uh, phone on Android, Google knows that one smartphone uh, is, is, is waking up and uh, it knows the IP address of the smartphone, etc. So it's, it really starts soon in the process. Um, 
So for this, for instance, for this, uh, we we change the source code and we replace this with other servers to 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 prevent this uh, this uh, first uh, data leak. And there are many others. Um, another example is the NTP servers. Uh, NTP is a service to um, you know uh, set your your date and time automatically from uh, the internet. And uh, the, it's using some NTP servers uh, all, over the, all over the world. And this is a, um, you know, very common stuff uh, in operating system to use NTP servers. But specifically in Android, Google uh, has put their own uh, NTP servers only. So that's the kind of thing that uh, we try to improve and we replace uh, by, uh, by over, you know, the... the the global NTP pool um, for this uh, to give more guarantees in terms of uh, data privacy. Um, this is quite the same with DNS. So we are adding some stuff uh, to allow users to to use over DNS um, to set a specific DNS, for instance. And there is also uh, the question of uh, of uh, you know the um pre-install uh, default application uh, in the system so we replace uh, most of these applications you know like uh, google maps etc by equivalent uh, data give more um, give more uh, guarantees in terms of uh, protection for your personal data most of the time those are uh, some uh, software open source software that we find and we we try in some cases uh, we improve the software uh, for example, for example, to to offer better UI uh, to to really we want to to make this product um, to a large audience and obviously we we also have to work on the user interface uh, etc. Um, and then we are also uh, here we can talk about API because uh, AP, API days uh, is the the topic today. Uh, so regarding APIs uh, in Android, you have uh, um, a layer that is called uh, Google Play Services. Uh, this is a proprietary software uh, that uh, Google is adding on the top of Android, and it offers a set of APIs, a set of services for applications, you know, for instance, to uh, get uh, your geolocation or uh, to access uh, push notification uh, to offer in-app purchase payment. Um, a set of um, services that can be used by applications for various uh, purposes. And uh, we remove all those pieces of software because obviously this is a good way for Google to learn a lot about what you are doing, where you are, etc. And we replace this uh, by an equivalent, uh, which is an open source software called uh, MicroJ uh, that offers the same set of uh, APIs that can be uh, used by applications. Um, another thing that we do is that we replace the default uh, App Store uh, from Google by our own App Store, uh, which is using, you know, a third-party App Store with uh, uh, about uh, 80,000 um, Android applications now available. We also add some open source application. We add some progressive web apps. So we also do some innovation, not only some uh, on the privacy side. Um, and 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 we are working on a on a new uh, new features to protect the user's privacy. For instance, we have been working for a few months on a privacy central uh, application with uh, different features. Uh, for instance, for example, one of the feature uh, is to learn about um, trackers uh, that are active. You know, when you are using application. Um, many times uh, you have some trackers that are accessing some external and third party services. Those trackers, uh, they can be seen as, it, it's, uh, it's roughly the same as cookies on the web, but it's for mobile applications. Um, and we have developed an, uh, a software to detect what trackers are uh, uh, used at uh, a given uh, time by each or each or each application. And we will also give uh, the user, uh, let users uh, cut trackers in applications if they want to. Uh, one of the features of this privacy central um, application 
is that we are going to offer the user the capability to fake his geolocation. So for instance, if in some case, well, he wants just doesn't want any application on his mobile phone to know exactly where he is, <clears throat> he can just decide, um, I want applications to know that I'm in, uh, you know, maybe New York City or maybe uh, in Australia or maybe um, on a boat uh, in the in the on the sea. Um, and also the, the third feature uh, that we are going to offer to users is also to fake uh, his IP address. Uh, so when he's browsing the internet, he, he will be able to to prevent being tracked by uh, internet services services just by his uh, IP address. So that's what we are doing on the technical uh, side, on the product side. We will also int be introducing end-to-end -end encryption uh, progressively. Uh, we want to, to offer a product that will be auditable. We are doing open source. Uh, so we want to develop the idea of, uh, you know, privacy by design and auditable privacy, uh, not just claims. Uh, all our source code is available on um, on our uh, GitLab for review for if you want to build your own uh, um, operating system from this. Uh, today, um, EOS is available for about 200 different smartphones on the market. And we also sell some pre-installed uh, smartphones. We have some partnerships uh, with uh, Fairphone, for instance, uh, with Gigaset, uh, with TerraCube in the US. And we sell mostly today in Europe and in the USA. Um, our primary market today is, is Germany. So this is really something global. And we see that the, the market, uh, there is a market trend about privacy. Um, we see that more and more people uh, are aware of those privacy concerns and they, they don't support anymore uh, the, 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 how it's being operated by you know, the net giants and they want something different, they want a new way. So that's what we are doing. We are trying to bring this new way of viewing things and um, about privacy, but not only because we think that it fits um, in a, a more uh, general a trend that is, uh, you know, the search for um, uh, something better, for a better world, for sustainable uh, development. Uh, and that's the reason why, for instance, um, the Fairphone 3 with EOS has a huge success. We have sold a, a lot, a lot of uh, smartphones of Fairphone 3 with uh, EOS because you have, um, you know, uh, hardware, uh, sustainable hardware that can be repaired, uh, and, and, and at the same time, you, you can use um, an operating system that respects you, that uh, gives you uh, more guarantees in terms of uh, personal uh, data protection. Um, and today we have also on the online services uh, part, uh, we, are, we are close to uh, 40,000 uh, accounts uh, open. So this is growing fast now, um, and 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 again, I think that the the, the market is uh, really in demand for uh, something new, uh, something more ethical, some some something more sustainable, and and I'm pretty happy to 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 be part of this story with all the engineers uh, we work with and the the nice community of uh, supporters. Uh, um, that that we have uh, today at E. Um, so I'm, I think I'm. That's it. Uh, I'm not sure about the time. Uh, so maybe you will have some question. Maybe I forget something. So so let's go for the Q and A. Yes. Thank you very much, Gail. Thanks. So. Um, <laughs> uh, we have uh, some question. Yes, in the chat. Uh, one is about. Uh, uh, copywriting. So um, maybe say that some parts of Android are copyrighted or patented by Microsoft. So what does degoogling Android means in terms of uh, intellectual property? Um, 
I I I would need uh, more uh, you know uh, something more specific about uh, this uh, question. Uh, Android source code, uh, Android op, you know the um, op, the open source part uh, AOSP uh, Android open source uh, product is really in terms of uh, open source licenses is available for forking and and you can really take it, this and, and fork this. So I'm not aware of any real concern about this. I know there, there has been some stories and some issues in the past, but I don't think there are some issues and especially not exactly about uh, Microsoft. Uh, but uh, Okay, so, but uh, you use uh, only the, the open source part of, uh, sure. of Android, so, okay. Yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, but maybe um, in this open source part, did you, uh, find um, I would say like parts missing. Did you did you see parts that were missing that you you needed to to build a, a good product or everything you had inside this uh, Android part was uh, enough for you? And after you you you, you work on uh, removing trackers and everything. Yeah, uh, it's not enough because uh, and especially because we remove parts of of Android mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, well, or, or we don't install this, um, and especially every proprietary part uh, we remove, and and the Google Play Services uh, layer uh, we we don't include this, and we don't include you know uh, Google applications uh, by default. So uh, we 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 are really trying to to make a clean operating system, and and we replace every uh, missing. Uh, parts by equivalent uh, that we find in the open source uh, community, and sometimes we have to to clean the interface or to to uh, to fix some things. Uh, but uh, yeah, the only the only application that uh, is not open source at the moment uh, in EOS is the Maps application. Uh, it's an um, application made in uh, Europe that works well, and we ask them to provide some. Uh, uh, a lot of detail about uh, you know the the data flows between the application and their servers because we wanted to to provide this information to our users and to give some guarantees in terms of uh, how their personal data was uh, processed. Uh, but uh, actually, this is the only um, uh, application that is not open source, and I have I'm confident that at some point they are going to to make the client open source. And uh, we also have a, a question about uh, the profile of your user. We have uh, Anthony. Uh, the problem of Anthony is that um, her, his mom wants to use EOS. And the question is, like, his mom is not an engineer. It's, it, she is not uh, very good with technology. So um, can she install easily EOS uh, without being an engineer? I... Uh... Yes, if she if she wants to learn and to you know to read the docs and uh, and to learn the command line, uh, she can. Uh, we have also uh, created um, an easy to use installer that makes things easier. You you can you have a user interface and you, you plug your smartphone to your to your PC and uh, and and it, it makes things easier to install. However, I want to say that it's it's it can be tricky sometimes. So. Um, if for for people who don't have a knowledge, um, I don't recommend them to do that themselves. It's better to ask uh, to someone who already knows, uh, and it's also one of the reasons why we have started to sell some smartphones pre-installed because many people were asking for uh, pre-installed phones for many reasons. They didn't know, uh, they didn't uh, succeed, or they just don't have time, uh, even if they they have the the technical knowledge. So. So, but, but the, the answer is, uh, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend uh, to try if you don't know what you are doing, but, uh, but definitely uh, EOS is uh, targeted to a large audience and uh, we try to, to offer users uh, the most normal, you know, uh, digital life uh, mm. and, and they don't have to learn anything uh, to something different. Uh, this is a uh, really common uh, digital life experience and uh, last question so uh, to continue this question so you don't gather data about your users but do you have a, an idea of 
of the of the profile of this user are there like uh, as we say maybe engineers uh, do you have maybe uh, state person and interested by uh, that because they don't want to use uh, google as a uh, because of privacy and security problems. So yeah, well, do you have an idea of uh, who are the users of uh, your OS? Yes, so we have to ask them actually because uh, <laughs> we don't track them and we don't know every, anything about their personal data. But uh, yes, we, we did some uh, studies about this and uh, many of them uh, answered. Uh, the last time we got uh, 800 answers actually. So this is... Uh, significant and uh, to answer your question um, one part of our users today is uh, open source users uh, who okay. are looking for uh, you know a mobile operating system that they can use that is open source and that they can use on, in their daily life uh, as a, something just normal um, the other uh, group of people is um, people who are very concerned about privacy and the third group of people today is uh, uh, people who are looking for more ethical products in the IT. And sometimes they, they learn about us uh, from, uh, you know, websites about sustainable development. Uh, uh, we talked about Fairphone or something. And, um, and yes, so, so today we are like uh, we have those three groups. Okay. This is still a niche. But this is a global niche because okay. uh, mm -hmm. this is the, the same kind of people we find in the US, in Europe, and uh, probably in some other parts of the world. So, but uh, And progressively, we want to improve the product to go to a, uh, a bigger uh, audience. Okay. Thank you very much, Gael. And uh, Thanks to you. I wish you a pleasant day. And if you have five minutes to answer the question we didn't have time to address here uh, in the yeah. chat, uh, don't hesitate. Thank you very much. Yeah.